I am so excited to show you this last tool. I know by now we all have probably used Zoom. In fact, I think we're becoming the Zoom generation. But even if you're not using Zoom and you're using some other teleconferencing program, this video can really help you. I want to talk about interaction on video conferencing. And for that, I'm going to talk about Mentimeter, which you haven't heard about yet. And I will also add Nearpod, which we talked about before. So as many of you probably know, Zoom is a user-friendly video conferencing tool and it generates links for meetings so people with no accounts can still join in. And I think that's why it became so popular because you didn't have to have an account to use it. We use it to meet with students or colleagues. Many of us have been in webinars with it. In fact, the reason why I wanted to share this with you was because the other day I was at a webinar, this is confession time, and my plan was to not turn on the camera and just have my breakfast, mute myself, and sort of listen. But the person who was running the webinar decided to use Mentimeter. And all of a sudden there was all this engagement that we were asked to do. I had to put my cereal bowl down and engage and I had so much fun and I thought this is really the way to do it. Before I go on, I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of looking professional on camera. I think this is very important to teach our students because even though we may be learning at home, it is important for them to know that there are times to be formal and times to be informal. I've actually created a video and you can find it in the videos section of the workshop, but I wanted to mention just a few things right now. First, the importance of background. You do want to make sure that you have a background that is not distracting and it's also clean and professional looking. This means no dirty dishes, no unmade beds, no um, sleeping roommates behind people, because all these things, besides being unprofessional, are also distracting. Lighting is another thing that is important. You want to make sure that you have a lot of natural light coming in or if you're filming at night that you maybe have a three-point lighting system, one light in front, two lights in the back, and that way you don't get very harsh um, shadows. But most importantly, that you don't have something very bright behind you because then you look like the creature from the lagoon or the alien emerging from the spaceship and you definitely don't want that. You also want to look out for your frame. You want to make sure that it shows part of your torso, that there's a little space above your head, and that uh, it shows just the background that you want to be showing and nothing more. The angle is something that is important as well. You don't want to be showing uh, your angle from way down so it shows your nose hairs and the ceiling. In fact, if you see the ceiling, then you definitely need to pull your camera up. This means that if you're using a regular desk, you probably want two or three books. So it raises it at eye level. You also don't want to raise it so high that it looks like you're begging for mercy. So somewhere in the middle there works just fine. You want to make sure your sound is clear so people can hear you. And last but not least, etiquette. You want to make sure you emphasize to your students that they need to mute themselves because nobody wants to hear their cute puppies barking, cute kids screaming, um, people yelling in the background, lawnmowers running, and so many other things that can be happening. So these are things that are important to show our students. Now let's talk a little bit about Mentimeter. Mentimeter, if you haven't seen it yet, is a user-friendly program that allows us to conduct live polls, open-ended questions, word clouds with instant feedback and really fun because it shows it and I will show you in a minute. And you can share it in Zoom with screen share for an incredibly engaging presentation. This is the tool that stopped me from having my breakfast that morning. <laughs> you can use it for synchronous class meetings, work meetings, and I believe workshop presentations just like it happened to me. Here you can see the Mentimeter page where I've created my first presentation. And in it, you, can, you will notice that you have slides just like we usually do on other programs and we can create our different interactive things. These are the slides that I will be sharing on Zoom here in a minute so you see how neat those look. 
Another very engaging tool that you can use in real time is Nearpod. Just like Mentimeter is very user friendly and it allows us to conduct live polls, open-ended questions, drawings, and a lovely game about climbing a mountain with these little avatars. And it shows feedback as well. So before I had shown you Nearpod for asynchronous learning, this would be using Nearpod in real life. And all it takes is a code and students can navigate with it. And I will show you an example here in a second. And here is Nearpod. Nearpod, like Mentimeter, allows you to create slides. And on the slides, you can do either things with content or activities. Under activities, you can see you have quizzes, you can have matching pairs, drawing games, collaboration games, polls, and this one here, which is so neat, is called Time to Climb. And these you can also create and use real time on your Zoom call. So I will try to demonstrate here in a minute. So here we are on a typical Zoom call, and I'm going to show you the three engagement things that I was talking about. First, within Zoom, you have your polling. If you create ahead of time, you can see, for example, here I'm asking, what do you prefer, dogs, cats, or birds? What do you prefer, Star Trek or Star Wars? You just launch your poll, and then once it's over, you can actually share the results with people and everybody can see what everybody voted for. So that is a fun thing to do. The other fun one, of course, is breakout rooms, which breaks out people and then puts them in little rooms and the teacher can go in the different rooms and then come back as a whole class and then break them up again, have them discuss things, go in the little rooms, come back. This is a fantastic feature that really keeps things incredibly engaging. For the next one, I am going to screen share and I will show you how we would use this with another tool. And this is Nearpod. So I already started a Nearpod and I'm sharing it on the screen. And it has all the different questions that you can do on Nearpod. The students would get this code and go into nearpod.com and this would come up on their screens. This is just a sample slide and then you get um, what are you thinking right now? And you can see that in my phone, you get, I'm getting the same question. So I can go ahead and fill it out. And I said, great. And then when I moved that screen, it takes me to the next screen and it shows my flower that I just drew. I move the next screen and on my phone, I get the collaboration. It can also allow you to moderate, which is kind of neat, but I'm not going to moderate. What is your favorite animal? As you can see, it's this is also on my phone and I put up Maggie May in there and the polls. What is your choice, Star Wars or Star Trek? And then it keeps track here as well. So this is an example of using Zoom with Nearpod. Here we have Zoom with Mentimeter. So I have the Mentimeter presentation and I can just advance it and my students would see it as well. So I could run a poll, which is really fun because here you get all the pictures and the students as they answer can see these grow to see what is the majority of the class feeling like, for example. On the next slide with Mentimeter, I can ask them for thoughts and you can see it's just really pretty, very visual and I love that about Mentimeter. And then as people answer, little thought bubbles can come up and everybody can read everybody's comments instead of that little chat on the side that is not so user friendly. So this is Mentimeter with Zoom. I hope this short presentation has inspired you to try to use these tools of interaction with Zoom or any other teleconferencing you may be using so your students can really stay engaged with the lesson. Yay!